Okay, we're going to do some string and pulley questions here. Uh, this <clears throat> is a string pulley question. So what we have is a cart hanging over a frictionless pulley. So I call this mass subscript H for hanging mass. Okay, so you can imagine if this was frictionless, that this would fall down and these would both accelerate at the same rate. So here's the question. A 1.5 kilogram cart is attached to a hanging mass of 500 grams over a frictionless pulley. Determine the magnitude of the acceleration and tension of the spring. So I could say acceleration of the cart, but either one of these has the same acceleration. So it's the acceleration of the system, okay? The cart will be accelerating to the right and the hanging mass will be accelerating down. That's why I ask for the magnitude. And also I ask for the magnitude of the string because on this one, the tension will be up and on this one, the tension will be to the right. So some things we need to know about strings and pulleys. So first of all, the tension of a string is the same throughout, okay? It doesn't change anywhere in the string. The pulley just changes the direction of tension. So like I said, the tension is the same. It doesn't change just because there's a pulley here. It's the same here as it is there. That's why I only have one T here. And notice I don't have a vector on it because for each of these masses, it's in a different direction. Okay. All pulleys for us, as well as in grade 12, will be frictionless. So there are two ways to solve these questions. There's the intuitive way, which I really like. And then there's the long way which isn't really that long. It's just as good. Um, and it's super helpful to know how to do this in grade 12 physics. But honestly, <clears throat> either of these ways are good. Just understand what you're doing for either one. Both are equally effective. Use the one you like best. Okay, so I'm going to set up my paper for the next part, the solution. So if you want to copy this, pause it and copy the question. Okay, so for both methods, <clears throat> we need free body diagrams. All right, so for the long way, I'm just going to redraw the picture so we have it here. So we have a cart, we have it hanging over, and here's our pulley. Okay, these are frictionless, frictionless, frictionless. So for this free body diagram, I'm just going to draw a dot right here. Since it's frictionless, the only force acting on it is the tension force. Now there is a normal force in the force of gravity, which would be relevant if there was friction. Sorry, that's normal force, okay? Um, but really for this question, they're relevant, but it's really good to put them in just in case you might need them. If I ever put friction here and I gave you the coefficient of friction, you'd have to, you could find the amount of friction because you know the normal force. Now, this is a string. And we have two objects here. We have, I'm going to call this the cart, okay? And this is the hanging mass, okay? So here we have the free body diagram of the hanging mass, all right? And so there's tension up and there's gravity down. The force of gravity is the gravity pulling down on this mass. So this right here is the hanging mass times G, okay? This mass isn't, has, doesn't have anything to do with this, okay? This is just the force of gravity on the hanging mass. <clears throat> and the tension here is acting up. Now, what I do know is that this tension is equal to this tension because that's the same string, okay? And they pull on each other with the same magnitude but in the opposite direction. Sound familiar? It's Newton's third law. Now, to do these questions you have to choose a direction to be positive. So what I'm choosing is to the right and down as positive. And you need to do that to figure out this question because we need to put directions in. And these two tensions, they'll be the same, but they'll be in the opposite direction. And that'll come out in the equation, whether I'm talking about this cart or this hanging mass. <clears throat> so I'm going to write out the equations for each of these <clears throat> Sorry, objects. So for the cart, I have F net equals M. I'm going to call that mass of the cart times, sorry, ah, 
I wanted to go F net equals tension. It's the only force, but this is for the cart. So how do I know it's for the cart? Mass of the cart, acceleration equals tension. So that is Newton's second law for the cart. Again, the only force is acting is, is because of the tension. Okay, so now let's do the next one right here. <clears throat> so that's a little bit different. So we'll start with F net equals what forces are acting on it. Well, and I'm choosing down as positive. So I'm going to put FG first plus tension. Okay, so now here's where you have to make sure you have your directions, right? I'm choosing down as positive. So it's obviously accelerating down. Okay, so it's mass of the hanging mass. So I'm going to put MH. This acceleration is the same as this acceleration. Okay. And then here, the force of gravity is mass, hanging mass times G, which is down and it's positive. But here the tension is up. So it's going to be minus T. Now, if I look at this equation, and I probably could take away this vector because I chose down as positive. I know it will be accelerating down. What do I know and what don't I know? Well, let's look. I know the mass. I don't know the acceleration. I know the mass. I know G. It's always 9.8. And I don't know T. So there's two things I don't know, acceleration and tension. So I'm like, wait a second. If I look up here, this T and this T are the same by Newton's third law. So the, this magnitude of this T and this one are exactly the same. So what we're going to do, okay, is make a substitution. I'm going to start over here. I'm just rewriting this. Hanging mass, the acceleration, which I know is positive, mass, the hanging, times G, minus, okay? Now right here, I'm going to substitute for this T. Instead of writing T, I'm going to write mass of the cart and acceleration, okay of the cart because it's exactly the same. It's equal. So now when I look at my equation, the only thing I don't know is acceleration. Everything else, the hanging mass I know, the hanging mass I know. Acceleration due to gravity and mass of the cart. So think like think of these like X's in math class. We need to bring them together, okay, to solve them. These are like terms. So this is negative here. So I'm going to add that to both sides. I'm going to add MCA to both sides. So let's go ahead and do that. Here, this is going to end up being zero. That's why I did it. So mass of a hanging, okay, times acceleration plus mass of the cart times acceleration. And I'm going to just finish writing this term here. Now, like I said, think of these like X's. So I'm going to um, factor these out. All right. And finally, I'll get the acceleration, which is equal to the hanging mass times G, all divided by this term here. Okay, I know math class wouldn't like that, but I'm just trying to save room here because I'm just getting to the end of my paper. All right. So what I did was I factored out the A and then I divided this whole term on both sides so I could isolate A. Now this is where I would put in all my variables. The hanging mass, I got to go back to my paper. I don't remember what it was. The hanging mass was 500 grams. So I'm going to change that to kilograms. Okay. That's kilograms. I'm going to fill in 9.8 and that's going to end up being newtons on the top because that's a mass times an acceleration. And on the denominator, it will be a total mass. Okay. So I'm going to actually just write it here because I want to look at the significant figures. Mass of the cart is 1.5 kilograms. Okay. So let's add these up. That's going to be 2.0, okay, kilograms. Because when I add this up, 
I have to change this to kilograms, which is really 0.5. And when I add, I go by number of decimal places. So really it's gonna be 2.0. I can take an extra one for good measure. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my calculator and you'll notice it's Newtons per kilogram here. So let's go ahead and put that in. Okay, so I have 9.8 times 0.5, okay, which is 4.9. And I'm gonna divide that by two and I get 2.45. So I can only have two significant digits, so my acceleration, and remember this is just magnitude, is approximately equal to 2.00. Oh, oh. Leave it even is the rule if five is my deciding, so it's gonna be 2.4 meters per second squared. Now that's only half of my question. That's the acceleration, but once you know the acceleration, it's pretty straightforward to find the tension because you go back to this equation and just say that the tension equals acceleration times the mass of the cart. So there's my 2.45. I multiply by the mass of the cart, which is 1.5, and I get 3.675. So my tension is going to be approximately 3.5. 7 newtons and I've rounded there. I didn't show my work, but I ran out of space. I hope you can figure that out. So there you go. And then I will go on to method two. You can pause here and copy this if you like. All right. So on to method two, the intuitive way. I, I think it's a little bit faster, but I'm not sure. If you did the cart question, with me earlier and you watched that video, I'll just take that for a second. Okay. I'm going to use a very similar method that I did here when I talked about squishing them all together. Okay. And making it, making tension an internal force. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these free body diagrams and put them in a line in one direction. Okay. So I'm going to put them horizontally. So here is my tension. Okay. So this is my cart on the horizontal, and this is actually my hanging mass. But what I've done is I've taken, I'm going to take this free body diagram and I'm going to draw it horizontally. So here, this would be FG, which equals hanging mass, okay, times G. And I'm going to draw the tension this way. So now you can see this looks like the cart question with each cart or train connected to each other. Okay. Now, just like I did with the other question, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put these two masses together. So here's my cart. I'm going to pretend that this is a box and the only force making it accelerate is the force of gravity on this mass. So what would the equation look like for that? All right. So what it looks like is F net, okay, equals FG. That's on the hanging mass. Don't worry yourself that <clears throat> this is horizontal. This is the situation. I've just taken this and put it up sideways. So now what happens is, well, how much, I'll write this this way. All right. Um, so this is the mass of the hanging mass times G. So what I'm saying here is really what mass is this force of gravity acting on? It's actually acting on the mass of the cart plus the hanging mass. That's what's in this purple box equals m h mass of the hanging mass times g. Now when you look at this equation, doesn't that look familiar? It looks a lot like this here. Because what you've done is you've taken out, out the step of doing these two equations and then doing substitution just like you would be when you're finding the point of intersection. All right, now here to solve for acceleration, you just divide by 
okay? Your mass of the cart plus mass of the hanging mass, okay? And since I chose to the right as positive, this will, you can see that these two are in the same direction anyway, okay? You'd put in all the numbers and you'd get the same thing because you can see it's the same equation right here, okay? So it'd be 0 0.500 kilograms times 9.8 newtons per kilogram or meters per second squared, they're the same thing. And the mass of the cart, which is 1.5 kilograms plus 0 0.5000 0 actually kilograms, okay? And you'd get the same answer, it's 2.45 meters per second squared okay because it'd be kilograms and kilograms divide out and then i have newtons per kilogram which gives me meters per second squared and the question just asked me for the magnitude anyway now if you do it this way sometimes the question asks you for the tension sometimes it doesn't once you do this and you round and you get your final answer you still will have to find the tension so you still will need to use this equation, which means you'll then take them apart if you want per se and use the most simple one because this one is the only one we're looking for. Tension equals um, the mass of the cart times the acceleration. I just wrote it backwards because I know I'm solving for tension. And I'm just solving for the magnitude. So the mass magnitude Mass of the cart is 1.5 and acceleration is 2.45 kilogram meters per second squared, sorry. Okay, and you go ahead and write that down. So there's the two ways. Okay, 3.675 and that's going to be newtons. So my tension is approximately 3.7 newtons and my acceleration is approximately 2.4 meters per second squared. Okay, same answer, different method. Look over them both. <clears throat> it's just that one goes through really what I do to solve every question. And this one, you start by squishing them together. I call it the kind of squish method. Mr. Manicam calls it something else. But essentially, you're making tension an internal force. So you're essentially ignoring it in this equation because it's not an external force. And if you look at Newton's second law, it's only F net external that we're worrying about. So hopefully that helps. And ask me questions later this week. Bye-bye. All right, now this was a question number two for mostly third law questions. I didn't copy up the question. You guys have it. It's, um, I'll put it in the notes. It's a Newton's laws questions, okay? from last week. So here we have a boat and a person is diving off the boat. Okay, just in case you missed my stick drawings, here they are. So if you've ever done something like this or if you watched Funniest Home videos, often people push off the boat and the person falls in the water. But essentially, the person's going to push on the boat, the boat's going to push on the person, and actually they're both going to go kind of like this at the same time. Okay? So this is the information about the diver. When you're reading the question, I really like a table because on these you have to keep track about what belongs with what. And I give subscripts too. And also it saves me from having to do double subscripts on my question. So here's the diver. The diver has a mass of 75 kilograms. The question states that their final velocity is 2.5. They do not directly state that the initial velocity is zero, but it's kind of like in a race, you have to assume what did it start with? Well, you're standing there, so your initial velocity is zero, and it also stated that you'll be accelerating for 0 0.5 seconds. Let me just double check that. Yes, 0 0.50 seconds, okay? If her final velocity, she accelerated for this long. So what do we know about the boat, okay? We know the boat is has a mass of 325 kilograms, and its velocity is also zero at the beginning. And they ask us, what is the boat's final velocity? Okay, so since this is mostly third law questions, that's how we start. Now, 
I call these, pu these are like puzzles and you think, well, what pieces do I have first? This is like my edge pieces. I've kind of laid out um, what's going on here. Now, how do you approach this? Well, if I know that there's all this stuff about Newton's laws, let's just put it like this. The force, okay, of the boat on the diver is equal to the opposite force of the diver on the boat. Okay, so the force of the boat on the diver is equal to the force of the diver on the boat. So D stands for diver and B stands for boat. So <clears throat> force of the boat on the diver, force of the diver on the boat. So anything to do on this side is going to have a subscript of D. Anything to do with the boat, okay, is going to be on the right here. So this is the mass of the diver, okay, and it has an acceleration. Here, this is Newton's second law, okay. My, this is negative because of the opposite. This is the mass of the boat and the acceleration of the boat. Sorry, I forgot my subscript here. Okay. It's not the acceleration that's the same, it's the force. So you need to make sure you have a subscript here. In this case, the accelerations are not the same because the masses are not the same. Unlike pulley questions where they're attached, these have the same acceleration. Okay. So now let's see what I know. I know the masses of each of these and I don't know anything to do with the accelerations. But if you go ahead and look here, with this information here on the diver, V1, V2 in time, you're like, oh, wait a second. That gives me the acceleration of the diver because V2 minus V1 over time can give me acceleration. So now you have two ways to do this. If you want, you can solve for the acceleration and put it in there which is fine. That's how most students like to do it. So let's do it that way. So V2 minus V1. So V2 is 2.5 minus zero. This is meters per second. There's no direction on this. All right, so I know that this is going to end up being west and divided by time, 0 0.50 seconds. So you're gonna calculate that. But if you do know, you're dividing by a half, which is going to give me five, right? Because if you're not sure, 2.5 divided by 0.5 is five, just in case you didn't believe me. Do it in your calculator. Meters per second squared west. So this is the acceleration of the diver. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and put this in here. What do we know? Let's put in everything that we know. We know the mass of the diver. Okay, mass of the diver is 75 kilograms. Acceleration of the diver, I just found out to be five. Okay, here's my equal sign. Put the negative in from the equation. Mass of the boat is 325 kilograms. And the acceleration of the boat, I don't know, but hey, let's use that. If I find the acceleration of the boat, essentially I can do the exact same thing I did here because I could find V2. Now, you might not see where that, that that's where we're going. They asked me to find the final velocity, okay? And there's something missing here because I can't do what I did over here with the diver because I don't know the time. But if you think about it, the diver is pushing on the boat for the same amount of time that the boat is pushing on the diver. So this time is actually for both the boat and the diver. Okay, not just for one of them. So where I'm going with this is once I find the acceleration of the boat, then I can solve for V2 of the boat, which is V2 equals V1 plus A delta T, because I know time, okay? So 
let's go ahead and do that. Let's solve for the acceleration of the boat. I'm going to divide by negative 325 kilograms. Okay, and I'm dividing by the negative because I need to get rid of this whole term. So I get that, I'm going to come up here, the acceleration of the boat equals I'll put that in my calculator. Okay, 75 times 5. Okay, is 375, and I'm to divide by 325. And I get 1.153 meters per second squared. Now, I actually divided by a negative. I didn't put it in my calculator. Okay, so that's going to be negative west. Does that make sense? Well, what's negative west? Negative west is actually positive east. And that does make sense because if the diver is accelerating that way, the boat's going to be accelerating in the opposite direction. All right. So once we've found that, okay, we are going to solve for V2 because we know that the time is the same. So V2, and this is again, we're doing this all, this is for the boat because we're looking at the subscript here's boat. V1 plus A delta T. V1 was zero, so I don't need to worry about it. The acceleration of the boat is 1.153 meters per second squared east times the time was 5.0 seconds. So I still have that number in my calculator or not. What happened there? I think I hit it twice. <clears throat> okay, I'll have to get it back in again. 75 times 5 divided by 325. Okay, there's my number there. And I'm going to multiply that by 0.5 and I get 0 0.576 meters per second because this second and this second will divide out and this direction is east which makes sense because the diver is moving to the right or east and the boat is moving west so the v2 of the boat is approximately zero point and i look here two three two so all these numbers came from the least is two significant figures so it's five and i'm going to round this to eight meters per second east. All right. <clears throat> now, there is a way where you can combine all these equations and you just kind of work them, you know, down and you can do that as well. If you want, if you see that way, um, you, you kind of need to do that with the last question because you're actually not given the time in the football question, all right? So when you're putting in your variables, you just have to keep and carry time throughout because it's going to be on the left and the right. It will end up dividing out. Um, I could show you that quickly here at the bottom of the page, all right? I'm just going to go right from here and see if I can fit it here and just show you. Mass of the diver acceleration of the diver equals negative mass of the boat, acceleration of the boat. So what I do right here is just put in V2 minus V1 all over delta T. Instead of putting in a number, I'm putting in the variables. Okay, so if I put them in here, just have to remember, this is everything to do with the diver. I didn't do, I could do double subscripts, okay? But you can see how time is on both sides. These are equal, okay? So they're going to divide out. And in this case, okay, V1s were both zero. So that's zero, okay? And really what I'm left with, and I can rewrite it over here, mass of the diver is equal to the final velocity of the diver, negative mass of the boat, V2 of the boat, 
All right, so if you put in your numbers here, the mass of the diver, V2 of the diver, mass of the boat, V2 of the boat, this is what you're solving for, okay? But you know these three, you'll see you'll get the exact same answer up here. You're just putting equations into other equations instead of solving for numbers and putting them in there. So if you want, try that out, prove it to yourself that it works. And um, it's a superior way, especially when you're doing with vi variables that you do not know. Okay, good luck. And again, ask me questions.